Phil Khabri, I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. A very disturbing message this evening. It crossed a lot of lines. According to President Donald Trump, the Syrian gas attack uh, that has been blamed on the Assad uh, government for this attack there is what President Trump is saying, crossing a lot of lines. But the question is, has President Trump been building up the front lines as he claims that Assad has been crossing his own lines. Uh, going into this, as a, again, I must warn you, this will be a very uh, serious message, and it'll also have some graphic images in there that could be disturbing, especially for younger viewers. Please be advised of that as we move forward. Uh, everything that we're seeing that is happening, RT is reporting this, of course, many others are reporting it as well, that uh, President Donald Trump uh, has spoken about crossing a lot of lines. President Donald Trump speaking at the White House and the King Abdullah II of Jordan told reporters he would have to do whatever he had to do in the Middle East. It crossed a lot of lines with me when you will kill innocent children, innocent babies with chemical gas. That goes beyond the red lines, Trump told reporters on Wednesday. Now, I have to tell you in all fairness as we go into this, has President Trump, is he only a pawn in the game and not fully aware of the details of the movement of his own military uh, as this is uh, going on right now? Is he in the dark of what the military is doing? Don't forget, uh, as we know, what happened years ago with General Wesley Clark and what he said. I'll play uh, just a little segment of this for you again. Listen to this. Wolfowitz, I went downstairs just to say hello to some of the people on the Joint Staff who had used, used to work for me, and one of the generals called me and he said, Sir, you got to... Come in, you got to come in and talk to me a second. I said, well, you're too busy. He said, no, no. He says, we've made the decision we're going to war with Iraq. This was on or about the 20th of September. I said, we're going to war with Iraq. Why? He said, I don't know. <laughs> he said, I guess they don't know what else to do. So uh, I said, well, did they find some information collect connecting Saddam to al-Qaeda? He said, no, no. He says there's nothing new that way. They just made the decision to go to war with Iraq. He said, I guess it's like we don't know what to do about terrorists, but we've got a good military and we can take down governments. And um, he said, I guess if, if the only tool you have is a hammer, every problem has to look like a nail. Mm. So I came back to see him a few weeks later. And by that time, we were bombing in Afghanistan. I said, are we still going to war with Iraq? And he said, oh, it's worse than that. He said, he reached over on his desk, he picked up a piece of paper, he said, I just, he said, I just got this down from upstairs, meaning the Secretary of Defense office today, and he said, this is a memo that describes how we're going to take out seven countries in five years, starting with Iraq and then Syria, Lebanon, Libya, Somalia, Sudan, and finishing off Iran. That's terrible. Absolutely terrible. But as again, as I said, stated, I wanted you to hear that again. Uh, remember in 2013, the sarin gas attack that was blamed on President Bashar al-Assad that gave the justification for President Obama to actually enter into a conflict with Syria. Now, Obama never put in a large contingent of troops on the ground there. He always swore that he would not do it. But uh, since then, President Trump has been building up a very sizable force in the north part of the country dealing with Raqqa. Now, but remember... If those of you that remember that uh, it was Aaron Erdem, the former MP member of the Turkish government that really w uh, brought out the smoking gun that exonerated President Bashar al-Assad of any guilt of using sarin gas on his own people. And instead, as he was facing treason charges for bringing this information out, uh, was able to prove that the ISIS had brought the sarin gas through the Turkish government's uh, borders inside of Syria and was using this chemical weapon on about the time uh, of, uh, back in September of 2013. Listen to what Aaron Erdem had to say there the just MP, to Aaron show Erdem's you investigated for exactly interview gave to our what, team. He what told he our says. Channel that Islamic State in Syria allegedly received material to make deadly sarin gas via Turkey. The MP said an inquiry was opened into the incident, but then was abruptly closed. Chemical weapon materials were brought to Turkey and put together in ISIL camps in Syria, which was known as the Iraqi Al-Qaeda at the time. 
We have recordings to confirm this. A public prosecutor opened an investigation which led to those involved being detained. A week later, another public prosecutor was assigned and all the detainees were released. They left Turkey, crossing the Syrian border. He goes on into that, and I'll place the link on here for you just to be able to see this information. But it clearly exonerated uh, President Bashar al-Assad, the information that Aaron Erdem was able to make public here. Not only did he reveal this information to RT News, but he actually spoke as a parliament member before his own parliament inside of Syria. I've actually listened to those hearings uh, that he did, and the evidence was overwhelming. In fact, it angered the members of parliament because he also had evidence that the uh, prime minister at that time and even possibly the president, Erdogan of Turkey, were fully aware of the transfer of the sarin gas from Turkey inside of uh, Syria by the Al-Qaeda members, by the ISIS groups that were coming in there. What was even more alarming is that he also seemed to have the evidence but was not willing to bring it forth that the United States was aware of it but only turned a blind eye. And as well, European partners were also involved in this information. Of course, even more troubling is we have uh, the British journalist Seymour Hersh, who also uh, had the evidence that showed that under Hillary Clinton, when she was Secretary of State, that they had that she had authorized the movement of sarin gas from Libya into Syria. Very troubling indeed. Now, as we put this together, as I said, go back and look. President Trump is saying they've crossed a lot of a lot of lines for him uh, on this latest Syrian gas tax, which we see here. This is notice, and I want you to really watch the dates on here. April the fourth, right there on your screen and behind you. This is BBC News covering the Syrian gas attack uh, again. Syrian conflict, chemical attack, and Idlib kills 58. And of course, the, the videos and things that are brought forth are, are horrendous, and it's focused mainly upon children. At least 58 people have been killed and dozens wounded in a suspected chemical attack on the rebel-held town in northwestern Syria, a monitoring group says. The Syrian Observatory for Human Rights reported that strikes in Khan, uh, Sheikh Khan by Syrian government or Russian jets has caused many people uh, to choke. Now, this is what there, this was what that official report was coming in as saying, but there is no evidence that it was done by an airstrike. And yes, sarin gas does not have to be launched with an airstrike. Another thing, another thing to note as well that we brought up in our broadcast just the other day on Israeli News Live when we were sharing this information here, U.S. moves military equipment in striking distance of Damascus. By the way, that was April the 3rd, a day before the sarin gas attack there. We also made, or excuse me, it wasn't on this one here, it was actually on the one we did after the sarin gas attack. We made note of 250 individuals that had been kidnapped by rebel forces, disappeared, Syrian citizens that just disappeared and no one knows where, where their whereabouts have gone to. It has been alleged that those people that were kidnapped may have been part of the victims used in this attack here, only to be able to do a staged or mock attack. Now, again, notice the date, April the 4th, 2017. Also, a month earlier, uh, Maytham, on his own Twitter account, photo taken more than a month ago for White Helmets terrorists receiving a training on dealing with chemical, atta uh, chemical attacks in the same location. Now they're talking about the same location because the very location that you're looking at right now where the cave is carved into the wall for them to park uh, their vehicles at, this is where the victims of the sarin gas are brought to where they're washing them off the fame picture we're seeing circulating on the internet now of the White Helmets that they're treating sarin gas victims. All right. Also, uh, this was one that was probably the most damaging one of all. And this was uh, tweeted out a day before on the 3rd of uh, April. Partisan Girl shared this on her own Twitter page and she's quoting it from right here. I can see the small print, but if you can see the big print, in fact, I'll try to make it a little bit bigger just to make sure you guys can see this as the best you can. Uh, tomorrow, we're going to create a media story about chlorine gas attack. Now, if I'm not mistaken, the media actually covered it first as chlorine and then changed their story to sarin gas. Later changed to sarin, even though Syrian government uh, no longer has it. Now, that's what uh, the partisan girl actually states there. By the way, she does live in Syria. She's always covering these things uh, that are against the Syrian government. And But it is plainly written in Arabic on his own uh, 
uh, page there. She speaks the Arabic language, so she knows that the translation is accurate. Tamara is starting a media campaign to cover the density of air raids on rural Hama and use chlorine poison against, uh, poison against civilians. So they were anticipating, they were planning this all along. Very disturbing to know that. Right. All right. So the very th next day it comes out. Another very coincidental thing that she brings out is that a British doctor taking interview requests on chemical weapons attacks receives a gas mask from Britain a day prior. Well, is that a coincidence or not? Well, maybe it is. Who knows? This is what the doctor actually tweets out. This is the latest from the sarin attacks. Patients are still flooding in. This child's been rushed in without any family. They're probably dead. Our hospital's getting full from the sarin attack today. Anyone that wants evidence, I will video call you. Well, as they bring out there, he's so excited and happy to be able to do video calls while he's treating all of his patients. That is a bit odd, don't you think, for a doctor just to start doing video calls? I would want to treat the patients first and then deal with the video calls. That would only seem to make a little bit more sense, right? Now, again, it's very important that we look at the time frame of all, all this. Going back to President Trump, they crossed a lot of red lines for him, correct? Now, that's interesting that President Trump is actually saying that, right? And I've got to share with you why. Because he said that, and of course, on, uh, let's see, where is it at here? Uh, anyway, April the 2nd, keep this in mind. April the 2nd, as we brought out in our news broadcast just the other day, that was this one right here, U.S. moves military uh, equipment in striking distance of Damascus. We did ours on April the 3rd, all right? We did the coverage on April the 3rd because... We were getting the, uh, the information from uh, Lorenzo, who is the investigative journalist, uh, who was sharing with us that in Romania, they were loading desert camo military equipment on not one, but two of these huge ARC vessels. Uh, and in his particular analysis, he believed that the vessel was headed to Beirut, Lebanon. Well, the ironic thing is, is it ends up, it does go to Beirut, Lebanon. Now, even more interesting, though, is also on April the 3rd, there was uh, uh, the first trace of white phosphorus ammunitions were being used by the coalition in Raqqa province of Syria. And that was kind of interesting, and they actually had the photo to show it. Of course, a lot of the uh, uh, online things like Twitter and YouTube, they are blocking these images. They don't want you seeing this, uh, that they were using that. So... But the thing is, is the U.S. military was already loading military equipment to head to go to Beirut, Lebanon. Uh, now, at this time, he puts the question, Lorenzo says, if this information is correct, why is U.S. transferring military stuff towards Lebanon? He doesn't know as of yet that it's actually going to go towards Lebanon. But he sure enough finds out on April the 3rd, the tracking system that tracks this does an update, and yes, Beirut, Lebanon is the traje trajectory course of that ship, and it happens to be moored there even now. So absolutely 100%. Again, let me back up to something here, though, and just remind you here, um, and that was, uh, let's see, well, let's, let's move forward. This here, AFP, covering the story here. This was another very interesting thing that came out. Their article here, there, this is some journalists on the ground there where the sarin gas attack happens. says, the first thing that hits you is the smell. That's a major quotation that they bring out. They're here, these are supposed to be sarin gas victims, and they're talking about the smell, uh, uh, you know, from this chemical attack. That's the first thing that hits you. Well, anybody that knows anything about sarin gas happens to know that sarin gas is odorless and colorless and tasteless. So everything that they say in that particular article there is completely false to that of sarin gas. All right. So uh, dropping down to the sarin gas, most recently used sarin in September of 2013, the UN confirmed that a chemical weapons attack involving specially designed rockets to spread sarin over rebel-held suburbs of the Syrian capital took place in months before, right? Now, sarin, just to give you an idea, also known as GB, is a volatile but toxic nerve agent. A single drop of the size of the head of a pin is enough to kill an adult human 
rapidly. Okay? A single drop of it. It is colorless and odorless liquid at room temperature, but evaporates rapidly when heated. After release, sarin will spread into the environment, environment rapidly and uh, will present an immediate but short-lived threat. Okay? A drop of it, one single drop, can kill a, kill a human being. Well, what do you think this is here then? All these young men affected by sarin gas, and I guess the guys forgot to suit up with their sarin gas suits that were sent to them a month earlier. That was supposed to be part of the staged photo of the white helmets, but they forgot all about it. And instead of getting a drop with no gloves, nothing on, at least this guy here in the foreground does it, and the ones in the back don't, one guy has some gloves on, but you know, all this sarin gas, one little drop would kill a human, and they're just washing people off like no big deal. Is it really sarin gas they're dealing with or not? All right, let's move forward. Again, very troubling. Israel uh, is their air force holds joint exercise with the United Arab Emirates and the U.S. and Italy over in Greece. The whole purpose for the exercise is how to aid detection of the S-300 air defense systems of Syria and Iran. Interesting, isn't it? Not to mention, Israel also has major exercises going on right now, huge military call-up in the Golan after tensions between Syria and Israel and allegedly, according to the Syrian government, a shooting down of one of Israel's jets while it was bombing inside of Syria. That might be enough for uh, Israel to want to invade Syria to begin with. All right, so this is the disturbing part. Again, some of the children in the chemical weapons attack appear to have been bludgeoned to death, according to the photos that they show here. These are all allegedly children that were killed with the, sar with the sarin gas, but it doesn't look like they died from sarin gas. And the question real remains as well, could these be part of the 250 people that were kidnapped recently by rebel forces and have gone missing? But all these children here, every single one in the picture, all five of the children, have blunt force trauma to the head, every one of them. Interesting, isn't it? So, what do we have? What is going on here? What, what is really, really, really going on? This is something, another one that was very disturbing to me. Uh, Partisan Girl again, she quotes here President Trump showing the different changes, and this is what I wanted to share with you, I thought is very important. On the 2nd of April, Trump says he won't pursue a regime, regime change in Syria. All right. Now, while he says this, while he is saying that, don't forget, um, let me jump back over here real quick, sorry. While he is saying this, the same time, the very day that he says it, military equipment is being loaded that is headed directly to Beirut, Lebanon for a possible invasion of Damascus. Now, either President Trump has no idea what the elite and military planners are doing, or he is aware of it and just not telling the truth. I don't know the answer to that, so I'm not going to accuse him outright. But then on April the 4th, Syrian chemical attack, victims gassed as they slept. And then the 5th of April, Trump is swayed into a war trajectory. All right, 2nd of April. But again, as I stated though, on the 2nd of April, they're loading up military equipment to take to, to Beirut, Lebanon. And believe me, they didn't just up and decide to load it up on the second. That equipment was slipped into Germany, from Germany to Poland, Poland to Romania, Romania onto the ships, two ships, and those ships were sent to Beirut, Lebanon. That was a well-calculated, well-laid-out strategy of what they were planning on doing. Now, what's even more important to note, that began under the Obama administration. The Obama administration authorized all this military equipment back in December to be shipped to Germany. It was all sent in as camo. Everybody was wondering why camo was going. Later, the U.S. military answers, we're going to paint it after it's there. We're just sending it the way it is, but that equipment goes from Germany to Poland, Poland to Romania, loaded on the ships, and is now sitting in Beirut, Lebanon, in the ships waiting to be offloaded. 
Why has it not been offloaded yet? Well, because President Trump has got to give that go ahead. We're going to have to do something because the UN won't do anything about the Assad regime. That's the way they're looking at it. Forget President Assad being the president. And of course, as I stated, uh, we have to remember what General Wesley Clark had to say. Well, as it says right here, let's hear it, hear that again. This is a memo that describes how we're going to take out seven countries in five years, starting with Iraq. My fellow citizens, at this hour, American and coalition forces are in the early stages of military operations to disarm Iraq, to free its people, and to defend the world from grave danger. And then Syria. We had a chance to talk about uh, a, a wide range of international issues, including the situation in Syria. Uh, and I have to say that all of us who've been seeing the terrible pictures coming out of Syria and homes recently uh, recognize it is absolutely imperative for the international community to rally and send a clear message to President Assad that it is time for a transition, it is time for uh, that regime to move on, and it is time to stop uh, the killing of Syrian citizens by their own government. Lebanon, they both had different reasons, the State Department and the White House, for wanting Israel to do it, encouraging them to do it, supporting them. Our Air Force worked very closely with the Israeli Air Force for months before this, not necessarily with a deadline knowing when it would happen. It was always going to be whenever there was an incident, they would take advantage of an incident. Of, they would, the word I used was fortunate timing when the Hezbollah grabbed some of the uh, Israeli soldiers in early ju July. That was then a pretext, I think that's the only word, for a major offensive that had been in the works a long time. Libya. Today we can definitively say that the Gaddafi regime has come to an end. The last major regime strongholds have fallen. The new government is consolidating the control over the country. And one of the world's longest serving dictators is no more. Somali. Well, violence isn't only on the rise in Afghanistan. In fact, it looks like America's shadow wars have now increased by one. Drone strikes have long been reported in Pakistan and Yemen, but now there's news that a week ago, a U.S. drone aircraft fired on two leaders of the Somalian organization Al-Shabaab. Sudan. President Obama is sending 100 combat-equipped troops to Central Africa to advise local forces on getting... I guess you get the picture. Don't have to go any further than that. And of course, the troops are sitting off the coast of Lebanon. I guess while they're there, they'll go ahead and take out Hezbollah. Uh, there's no sense in kind of uh, steering back. Hezbollah is a threat to Israel, uh, and that I completely agree with. They are a threat to Israel's safety and security, and I can see where that will play into, uh, play into this to begin with. Uh, I cannot see any other way, though, uh, unless Russia is privy to what is going on, that the conflict will involve Russia. It's a very serious situation, and this is why I believe there's such a huge buildup of forces on uh, the also Russia's border in Europe, in Eastern Europe as well. Uh, very troubling indeed. As, again, as we can see, all the evidence is there. Uh, whether or not, again, President Trump has been privy to this, whether or not he is, is or is not, still remains to be seen. The, the fact of the matter is, though, it's not that anybody has crossed the red line. It looks like, once again, the Syrian government has been set up by another, uh, not so much a false flag. No doubt the Syrian gas was probably actually put out there. But again, it was blamed on the Syrian government. And the evidence is clearly there that the United States is preparing an invasion. We knew it a day before that, and then the sarin gas attack comes, then another day after that. Now President Trump is willing to do something about it. I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. I encourage you to share this video everywhere you can, and if you would, please do support the broadcast, the work we do here. Um, it is vital. We need your help in keeping this type of broadcast going. I'm Stephen Benoon with Israeli News Live. Eric. Thank you.